Good afternoon. Welcome to Lakehurst Community Church. Hey! hey. Now, now, that's the vibe we want for the entire day, right? Enthusiasm. Um, I'm Stephanie. I'm part of the leadership team here at Lifehouse. If you're new or visiting with us, this is not how we normally look. <laughs> um, it is our birthday, um, our 30th birthday in fact, and so people have come in their fancy dress or dressing fancy. Um, most other weeks you'll find us in, in jeans and t-shirts, so don't be, don't be put off by that. Yeah, so we have come to celebrate what a joy that is. Um, we believe that God speaks, um, and he's already spoken to several people for today's service, but we believe that he can speak to everyone, and so if at any point throughout the service you have a word or a Bible verse or a picture um, that you think is from God, I'll be sitting here at the front, or in this general area, come and find me here with me, um, and we'll see if we can if we can fit that in. Come on in. Somebody. Owen oh, seems to have a palette of apples at the back. It's distracting me. Um, so the service today is going to look a bit different. We're going to Chris is going to speak to us for a little minute, and then we're going to have some sun worship. We're going to do some different things and then we're going to have a bit of a chat again at the end. I don't know how to will for them, otherwise I would. Um, if it helps you to do something with your hands while somebody's talking, there's colouring and paper and all sorts at the back that you can go there. There's also loads of balloons and streamers at the back to play with. Just don't touch these ones. <laughs> Um, so a very brief overview, we're going to get more into our history as a church as we go on, but we, there's been a church in this site, everybody's just watching the screen, <laughs> Jane's listening, thanks, um, there's been a church in Vista since about 1992, um, when a group from Oxford Community Churches, one of our, our sister churches, um, planted here. And there's been outreach in Banbury since about 2006. There's the Ely's who now lead us as a whole, planted Lighthouse Kidlington in 2015. And then in 2016, I think, <laughs> we joined all three together, Vister, Banbury and Kidlington, to become Lifehouse, one church in many locations. Um, and Mark and Catherine took over all of that. And so today, 30 years on, we just want to take some time to stop and go, wow! You know, look how far the Lord has brought us. And to give thanks and yeah, just to take stock and be grateful for everything that God has done um, and has allowed us to partner with him in, in this area. And so I'm going to pray and then I'll hand over to Chris. Yeah, Father God, thank you that you move. Thank you for your presence in this area long before ours was. Thank you for the joy of being included in your work and in your kingdom. We are so thankful for everything that has come before and we are hopeful for everything that will come after. And so be with us, help us to find joy and gratitude this afternoon as we worship you. Amen. Thank you. Ahoy, me hearties! <laughs> yeah. I have to say, it is the first time I've given a talk in church dressed as a pirate. Um, do you know what? I'm, I'm hoping it won't be the last. Uh, 
here at Lifehouse we want to be a place of joy and of fun and for some of us that looks like dressing up. So why today are we taking the opportunity to acknowledge and celebrate the church's birthday? Well, as followers of Jesus, celebration is at the heart of who we are. And here at Lifehouse, we want to take every opportunity to practice that, to learn as a church how to celebrate well. So I'm just going to take 10 minutes right at the start here to hopefully answer the question, why celebrate? Why are we celebrating today? Why does celebration matter in general? Why celebrate? Well, firstly, I'll say it again. We celebrate because as followers of Jesus, celebration is right at the heart of who we are. We have a lot to celebrate. Jesus died on the cross to get rid of our sins and to restore us into right relationship with God as God's children. And Jesus rose again from the dead. Our saviour is alive. And through his sacrifice, we can have eternal life. That's something worth celebrating, right church? Yeah. Yeah. That's the response I was hoping for. <laughs> and this puts celebration right at the heart of what it means to follow Jesus. But I think as a culture in the UK, and in England in particular, Stephanie the Scot reminded me, we struggle to celebrate. Public expression of joy isn't necessarily something that comes naturally in British culture. Maybe we think it's not proper or appropriate or dignified to celebrate, to preach in church dressed as a pirate. Uh, it's maybe a bit embarrassing. Perhaps we're out of practice of celebrating as Christians in England. The ancient church calendar was full of festivals and celebration, as well as times of fasting and of mourning. And in the Bible, the book of Ecclesiastes teaches us that there's time for both. There's a time to weep and a time to mourn, a time to laugh, a time to dance, a time to dress solemnly, a time to wear fancy dress. Let me tell you, Lifehouse, today is a time to laugh, a time to dance, and a time to celebrate. Now, celebrating can be a sacrifice, and it can certainly be a choice. Our choice to celebrate puts God in his rightful place in our lives. Andy spoke to us a couple of weeks ago about our attitudes when we give things over to God. And this attitude of surrender, of what we have, doesn't just apply to money. I know that many of us are going through struggles at the moment, and it is right to acknowledge hardship and to grieve together in community. But there is a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. There's a story in the Old Testament that is often referred to when talking about celebration. When King David recaptures the Ark of the Covenant, the symbol of God's promises to the people of Israel, and he brings it back to the city of Jerusalem. And 2 Samuel 6 tells us this story. It says, David and all Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord with castanets, with harps, lyres, tambourines, rattles, and cymbals. And wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might, while he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sound of trumpets. And there's two things we can learn from this. Firstly, David doesn't let the dignity in his position as king stop him from celebrating with all his might what God has done. But secondly, this story in the book of 2 Samuel doesn't take place in a day. It actually spans over three months. The fight to reclaim the Ark of the Covenant is a hard one. And even when the battle is won, and they are joyfully bringing back the Ark to Jerusalem, someone is killed and it halts the celebration. Three months later, they continue to bring the Ark back to Jerusalem and they resume their celebrations. So celebration isn't blindly ignoring hardship and grief, but it is always a choice. In choosing celebration, there will almost always be something we have to lay down to sacrifice. 
but we are called to praise God in the midst of our circumstances. And that's what we're going to do today. And finally, we celebrate because it glorifies God. Today we're celebrating what God has done in Vista, in Banbury, and the villages in between. During the last 30 years, our church has had a footprint in this area. We celebrate to acknowledge what God has done in our lives and in the life of the church. And we celebrate not just as individuals, but as a community. Christian celebration should bring communities together around the God of everlasting joy. And in Psalm 145, it says, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. And throughout this passage, we see different things that they and I, the community and the individual, are doing to celebrate God's works. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. Celebrating as a community builds up our faith as individuals. As we speak of what God has done for us as a church community, it gives us boldness and encourages us to share what he's doing in our own lives. It's like a feedback loop. The encouragement and celebration builds and builds within community and individuals. And the other thing that jumped out to me in that passage was where it says, one generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. Do you know what? I'm so grateful for the different generations that are represented in Life House Community Church. And my prayer is that we grow more and more in diversity and in unity. And something we can do in celebrations like this is passing down through generations the story of what God has done. We've got photographs up here from when the church started and from the years since. We've got plenty of people here today who were around when the church was planted in Vista in the 90s. I'd encourage you today, especially if you're fairly new to life house, ask people to tell you their stories of the church. We can build each other up through sharing stories and sharing testimonies. And this glorifies God as we declare what he has done. In the Old Testament, we see that one of the ways that generations celebrated and passed down what God had done for them was through building physical monuments. In 1 Samuel 7, it says, Then Samuel took a stone, and he set it up between Mizpah and Shem. These were two towns in Israel. He named it Ebenezer, which means stone of help saying, thus far the Lord has helped us. And we see this is quite a common practice in the Old Testament, building some sort of cairn or monument to commemorate what God has done. These were made of stone, which meant they lasted for generations. In fact, later on in the Old Testament, we find that this place where Samuel built this stone of help, it's known as Ebenezer after this commemorative stone, the stone grew the placement. Are our testimonies, are our celebrations, our stories of what God has done, are they being passed down through the generations to strengthen and encourage one another? We're going to do some of that today. After our time of song worship, we're going to build an Ebenezer together. We're going to decorate stones with stories and testimonies of what God has done in our lives and in our communities over the years. And we're also going to make a timeline, which we're going to add with key dates, like house moves, when we join the church, kids being born, things like that. We want to create a shared document of what our community has been doing over the last three decades. So as we gather together to celebrate today, as we tell stories and sing songs of praise, let's remember why we celebrate. It's at the heart of who we are, 
We celebrate because Jesus has saved us. And we choose to celebrate even when it's difficult. Because our choice to celebrate puts God in his rightful place in our lives. And we celebrate because it gives glory to God. And it does us good as individuals and as a community. I'm just going to end with prayer. So Father God, as we gather, would you teach us to celebrate? And to celebrate well? Would you teach us to tell of the power of your awesome works? And to proclaim your great deeds to those around us? Would we celebrate your abundant goodness? And joyfully sing of your righteousness. Amen. Amen. We are going to sing. Um, that's why we're here, isn't it? It's to praise God for everything that he's done. Um, so why don't you stand if you're able. I'm going to read from a psalm. I must say I have plenty of option for joyful praise and celebration from the psalms. But I have gone for 150. And then we're going to move into some sun worship. So it says, there's a theme here, see if you can spot it. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Great. Well, good afternoon. It's really, really great to be with you. Uh, my name is John. Uh, this is Jen, my wife. And, uh, oh, hello. Hi, my name is John, this is Jen, my wife, we come from Carston Community Church. It is a real privilege to come and worship with you uh, this afternoon. I hope we are going to sing some songs that you guys know. They were, they, most of them were in your old computer, so hopefully you'll, you'll know them, but uh, we're simple people, so they're simple songs, and I'm sure you can join us as we, uh, as we worship. Uh, I just, just felt like there's something of joy that God wanted to release in us. You might find that joy comes as you maybe take a step away from your chair, as you step out of your row there perhaps, or uh, as you uh, clap your hands. We might want to do a bit of clapping this morning, this afternoon. You might even want to dance. You're welcome to do however you, however you like. So you are my joy. You are my joy, 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 you are my joy. You are my joy. Oh 
There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We're going to shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We're going to shout out your praise.
hands. I'll tell you what, let's just all at the same time lift our voices and thanks and praise to our family. Thank you, Jesus.
we're going to need to have some kind of competition. Why don't we cheer for the person that we think is the best? Right, so we'll go one at a time. So if you think, your prop's blown away. They do that. If you think Linda is the best dress, why don't you cheer?
Okay, we are now going to move on to do some of the things that Chris was talking about earlier. So we're going to start by making a timeline of our church history. Um, so at the back, it's hard to miss because there's three long tables all in a big row and a waving pirate. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're all going to get up and go there and write down stories of our corporate but also of our personal history on there. So it goes from I think 1990 um, and there should also be a space for things in the future. And so I want you to write down what has happened but also what you what your prayer is that will happen. Yeah? Everybody stand up and go there now. I'll show you back in a few minutes. Once you have finished doing that, there's then also so nice. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Not that you don't normally look nice, uh, but great to see you looking so good. Um, and don't get any ideas, I am not dressing like this on a weekly basis. Uh, that is good. Uh, today, it's been great. Uh, first, I just want to do something else before we get into this very quickly. Uh, this has taken quite a lot of hard work uh, to do all of this, and uh, they won't do it themselves, um, but Chris and Stephanie have spent a lot of time putting all this together and uh, making things and building things and uh, for us to have a fabulous time. Uh, and I wondered if we could show our appreciation to them. Um, in a moment, uh, after I've spoken, you're going to be able to try the most delicious cakes <laughs> that you could possibly eat. Rod, you'll have to give us whether you think it's a thumbs up or not. Uh, but uh, I, I just wonder if we could thank Hannah. Hannah spent a long time making this. And if you haven't seen it yet, it, it just looks beautiful. 
The display looks fantastic, so thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you to all those that help in various other ways, from serving refreshments and uh, welcoming people and PA and all of that. Church meetings like this, they don't happen without the church coming together and getting involved. And we're so grateful. So why don't we give everyone a round of applause. today and one thing I'd, I'd love to say is it won't be like this every week <laughs> Why not? but, <laughs> but <laughs> one thing I'd love to see every week is the joy that's around yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and the expectation that when we gather we meet with the Lord that we have fun that we declare who he is that we love one another, we care for one another, and that the joy can flow, even in the midst of sadness, that joy can flow. It's been great remembering where we've come from all those decades ago, what God has done, done through the decades, and the faithfulness that we've seen. Our God is a faithful God. Yes, yeah. I don't take this granted to be able to stand here and lead on behalf of God, his people. This is a privilege and an honour. And I'm grateful for all the years of service and dedication of many people over the decades. And I'm grateful for what God has done, that he has gone before us in many situations. But now I want to focus on where we're going. I want to look at briefly at the book of Joshua. We're not going to look at the whole book. I did have a clicker there. already do it for me for that, don't even need to do it. Great. I want to look at the book of Joshua. For those that don't know, Joshua was Moses' aide. He was like an assistant leader, part of his team. Uh, Moses was the guy that led the Israelites from slavery to freedom, uh, that walked through the Red Sea as God parted it. You might have heard of the story of the plagues and various things. Uh, Joshua is the follower, follower on of Moses. And in Joshua 1, uh, it says this. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then... You and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country of the, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to the ancestors to give them. I believe where we're going is it's now time for us to enter the promised land. There's a new day for us to move into. I believe God has promised it. 
just like he did to Joshua and like he did to Moses before him that he promised to take to give them the land God has called us to reach the Churwa Valley to reach Bista and Banbury and every village in between and I believe it's time for us to step into the promises God has got for us. We shared our vision statement uh, at least a few months ago of Lifehouse Community Church bringing hope to the Churwa Valley. And we've begun to outwork that, but I believe there's a greater step for us to take. That there's new land and new territory that God wants us to take. He wants it to increase our expectation. I wasn't going to come dressed like this. I'd ordered an astronaut costume. <laughs> I actually tried to buy an inflatable <laughs> astronaut costume. I had a little back battery pack and it inflated on you so you could go <laughs> like that. But that was out of stock. And my astronaut costume is somewhere with the delivery driver. Somewhere, I don't know. It was supposed to be yesterday and it might come tomorrow. I might still keep it. <laughs> but uh, Neil Armstrong said one small step for man one giant leap for mankind as we step into the new land that God's giving us it might seem just too much it might seem that all we can do is take a little step but what God does is he steps with us and his steps can be far bigger and wider and greater than ours are. We don't sit here today because of what we did, we sit here today because of what God has done. And I know as we push out, as we go further into what God is calling us to do, that he is going with us. In verse 5 and 6 it says to be strong and courageous. In verse 9 it says, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you forever you go. God wants to impart in us today a new strength and a new courage. Where we're jaded, where we're disappointed, where we're fed up, God wants to come and bring us a new strength and a new courage. He won't forsake us and he won't leave us. He hasn't left this church from the day of when it started. He's going to continue to be with us. In verse 10 and 11 it says this, So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, Get your provisions ready. Three days from now you will cross the Jordan here to go in a t and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. When we go on a journey, we might think we can take everything with us. That phrase, isn't it? I'm going on holiday and I'm even taking the kitchen sink. Our cars are exploding, especially when you go camping. You know, you're squashing that bit in. 
We can't take everything on this new journey. There's going to be some things that we're going to have to leave behind. Maybe there's expectations of how we think things should be done or should have gone. I believe we've got to leave those behind. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's disappointment. God's saying this is a new day for us to walk in. This has been a joyous time that we've had. What's happened in the past is absolutely fantastic. And we want to honour it. We want to give God the glory. But God wants to say, we've got to move into the fresh calling that he's got for us now. We've got to start looking forward and taking the land that he's asking us to take. In verses 12 to 15, it says, uh, but to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, Remember the command that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you after he said, The Lord your God will, let, will give you rest by giving you this land. Your wives and children and your livestock may stay in the land that Moses gave you, you east of the Jordan, but all your fighting men be ready for battle must cross over ahead of your fellow Israelites. You are to help until the Lord gives them rest as he has done for you and until they have, too have taken possession of the land the Lord God is giving them. After that, you may go back and occupy your own land which Moses the servant the Lord gave you. What happened in this story was some of the tribes said to Moses, oh, give us this bit of land. We're happy to stay here. And Moses said, yes, but when the time comes that the rest of the people of God are going to move across the river, you've got to go and help too. We're called to be family. We've just thanked lots of people, and I know so many people serve and support and many other things. God is calling us to be family. That it's going to mean at times sacrificing what we might think we're doing, should be doing, in order to serve others. At the moment, we have two locations. We have Bista and Banbury. And God wants to call us to work together. We're stronger and we're better together. At points, it's going to mean us serving in other locations. It's going to mean us helping one another out. We're called to be family. We're called to be team. I've loved the joy that's around today. My hope for us going forward is that we love one another like we've never loved before. That relationships would deepen that it would be multi-generational, that all ages would be mixing, that we would be sharing life together and supporting one another. I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna skip a little bit. In fact, I've probably run out of time. Uh, let me share the last one. I was gonna do something in between. Uh, we've, we've got to be doing it. In Joshua 3, this is what happened. 
So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at the flood stage, all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the Ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from the upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Z Zarathon. While the water flowing down to the sea was completely cut off, so the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed crossing on dry land. There's one thing about God promising something. There's another thing about doing and acting on what God has told us. Here we read of another crossing, that the water stacked up, that there was dry ground again, just as Moses had led them through the sea. There's a new day. I want to encourage us that we've got a part to play. That we've got a part to play in bringing hope to people that don't know him yet. That we're called to be intentional, going to people, as well as inviting people. We're called to be generous with our time and our resources. We're called to be expectant as we are spirit-filled and spirit-led. We're called to see transforming, hurting people through effective discipleship. So that we become hope carriers and in turn transforming society. We don't just want to say that we're going to bring hope to the Joe Valley. We want to declare it that today is a new day that we're going to step into the promises God has given us and that we're going to see our towns and villages transformed. Transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Transformed by what God is going to do in us and through us as we are the people of God. And so today, I want to say, will you come with us as we cross the river? As we cross into the new land, as we take hold of this new vision that God has given us, that we would work as a team, that we would leave things behind that are not to be taken, that we would trust in God and be strong and courageous. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We are going to thin it. This is definitely higher than it was last time I was here. Can you see me? Yeah. <laughs> we are going to finish with one more song. Um, it is a song called Build Your Kingdom Here, but more than just a song of worship and of praise, it is also our prayer for this area that God would build his kingdom here. And as we do that, Chris is going to build the Ebenezer, that monument that says, look how far the Lord has brought us. He's going to build that as we go, and then we're going to move on with some cake and all sorts of fun things.
Thank you.